So here is how long division works once again. First thing you do is you ask, how much does 17 go into? And you just start going down the list. So you look at 3, mm, doesn't work, go to 35. Okay, how many times does it go into 35? And if you remember, it goes in twice. Okay, so because 2 times 17 is 34. So it goes in twice. So 2 times 17, I multiply this way. I put 34, and then I subtract that. And I would bring down 17 here. And then we would move on. So let's do the same thing here. It's very, very similar, except for instead of asking, does x squared plus 1 go into this? Or does x squared plus 1 go into to, to something? You only look at the very first term every time in a polynomial. You only look at that because there's no way to ask the other question. So we just start with the first. x squared and x to the fifth. The question is, how many times... Does x squared go into x to the fifth? Well, that might seem like a confusing question. How many times? Like three, four, how many times? It's the same as saying, hey, what's x to the fifth divided by x squared? This divided by that. And if you remember, okay, they have the same base. So I subtract the exponents. This would be x cubed, x cubed. Now, if you want to do it the way the book does it, uh, you're going to write that answer above the cubed column. Now, I don't really care. If you wrote it over here, it's not going to matter. It's not going to change anything. But if you like to be consistent, we're going to write x cubed right here above the cubed column. Okay? Similar to uh, what we did over here. We wrote the 2 above the hundredths column for the same reason. Okay? But you don't have to. But uh, if you want to be consistent that way. So, once again... How we got this is by taking the first term in each of the polynomials and dividing x to the fifth divided by x squared is x cubed. That's where we get it, okay? The next step is exactly like this one, where we multiplied 2 times 17. Here I'm going to do x cubed, but when I do it this time, I'm doing it by the entire piece here. So I'm not just doing x cubed times x uh, squared. I'm doing x cubed times the whole thing. So I have to times it by both pieces. So x cubed times x squared is going to add the exponents. So x to the fifth, x cubed times 1 is x cubed. And now here's where it's really, really important to write it under the right column. I'm not going to write it under the fourth. I'm going to write it under the cubed column. So x cubed times 1 is x cubed. So there I have it, just the same way I did it here. 2 times 17 is 34. And just the same as I went to subtract here after I got that, I'm going to subtract here. So I'm going to subtract x to the fifth. I'm going to subtract x cubed. I'm going to total that up. And I'm going to get nothing there. I still have 2x to the fourth. And I have minus x cubed. 0 minus 1x cubed is minus x cubed. Now, I don't need to drop these down because, as, I, as you see here, I didn't need to drop the 2 down. It's still there, but I don't need to. You could write the rest of it. That would be fine. Okay, so let's come back to this one. Now I do the same process again. 17 goes in 17. Oh, once. That's great. So I'm going to write in 17 because 1 times 17 is 17. I'm going to subtract it. And lo and behold, I get 2 at the end. Okay, and now I say, okay... 17 can't go into 2, so this is called my remainder. And how we express it up here in the answer is we put the remainder on the top and the thing I was dividing by on the bottom. 21 and 2 seventeenths. We're going to do the same thing here, but we have to do all the rest of the steps again. So we're going to start all over again. So now looking here, the first term is this. I'm going to divide it by the first term here. So the question now is 2x to the 4th over x squared. Okay, so let's subtract those exponents. That would be 2x squared, positive 2x squared. Okay, because the 2 is not going to cancel with anything here, but x to the 4th divided by x squared is x squared. Okay? Now I'm going to do the same thing. We're going to take this piece, multiply it by both of these things. So 2x to the 4th and 1 times 2x squared is 2x squared, and I need to write it in this right column. It's squared column. I'm going to write it right here, 2x squared. 
And now I'm going to subtract. And as I do that, this is going to dip down still. I still have this minus x cubed still there. This is 0. And now I have minus 2x squared. And so I'm going to do it again. So this process is going to take a while. What I want you to do right now is uh, pause the video and see if you can get all the way until the remainder. Okay, go ahead and give that a try. Okay, so now hopefully, if you did it right, you got a remainder of x minus 3. Okay, x minus 3. Take a look at the whole thing, see what, see what I did. So now the question is, what do I do with this remainder? Before, what I did with my remainder is I put that on the top, and then on the bottom I put the thing I was dividing by. So this is going to be on the top of the fraction, x minus 3. And on the bottom is going to be x squared plus 1, because I can no longer do this division. I'm done. Now, the question is, well, do I just write it that way? Is it 2 times that? And if you look back here, is this... 21 times 2 seventeenths. No, it's 21 plus 2 seventeenths. So here I'm going to do a plus symbol. And now this is my entire division there. That is long division. Yes, it takes a long time. And no, not every problem in the book is this long. But this is as complicated as it gets. The ones that you're going to see are probably going to, for the most part, be a little simpler. But just know, long division, if you take it step by step, it can be super long, and you can still get it right.